Hello guys, that's Ledger here. I did try to make this video spoken, but uh, you can see right now I'm not I'm the speaker at all. I got uh, very stuck, it's possible for me. So I only wanted to say thank you for your continuous support and I'm going to say the word to my slave A. Thanks cow, leave the talking to me. I was created for this. Okay. The target of today's video is the direct comparison of damage between the poke shell combo and the worm stake one. First of all, it is necessary to understand how worm stake works. Worm stake is composed by four attacks. There is the initial stab, it has a movement value of 28% of your raw, that is a 16.6% .6 stronger poke, it can crit, apply status and get sharpness bonus. It is a regular normal melee attack. Then. There is what I call the injection. It is another pure melee attack with a small 4% value. It must hit for the ticks to begin counting. The meat of the attack are the ticks. They are too many to count manually but thank goodness they added a hit counter to the training pole. In the base world the attack would tick 10 times but now it does 13 or 14 ticks. This is an interesting aspect that I want to do a video just for it to bring awareness but for now. In console you will get 13 ticks most the time and in PC you will get 14, I will use 13 for calculations. On level 7 gun lenses each tick seems to use a close value to 24% of raw. There is some rounding up so it is a little bigger than that but the difference of 1 point is just 13 damage in total, so I'm going to use that figure. The ticks do cutting damage and are not affected by neither critical hits nor sharpness. You do the same tick damage at green sharpness and 0% affinity than with purple and crit boost 3. Finally, there is an explosion at the end, it is a little beefier than a normal shell hitting for around 220 damage. You can only worm stake after a full burst, a sweep or two normal shells. In the context of the video being focused on wide, I will use the two normal shells. As you see, this is a very complicated move and makes it hard to compare with other combos. The best approach is getting how much the ticks are worth in pokes. I have pulled out an excel for these calculations. Basically the calculation is getting your poke damage on a critical hit, and subtract out of it both the critical and the sharpness modifier. In white the modifier is 1.32 and in purple 1.37. So, by example, at 127 poke damage, you get 68 damage per tick, multiplier by 13, 884 damage. Finally, we divide it back for the poke damage and we get a ratio of 7.01, adding the first poke part of the attack, we end with something between 8 and 8 and half pokes. On white sharpness the ratio is lower but similar because the initial poke gets stronger. Now, about the shelling part of the attack, we get two normal shells up front and the final explosion roughly for roughly 504 damage. 3 and 1 third shells of damage. Now. How many pokes and shells do you need to match these numbers? Here we face the usual issue of adding raw to true damage where true is fixed independent of hit zone and raw depends. So we need yes or yes to know the number of pokes and shells to compare against. For the comparison, I'm using two breakpoints. The first one is when you recover control after tossing a stake and the second is after you finish a full reload. On the first one there is time for four pokes and five shells. The second is two full clips of poke shell measuring for six pokes and six shells. On the first one, the, on the, first one, the comparison is 3.33 times 149 plus x8 versus 5 times 149 plus 4x. I do a first simplification and we get 8x versus 4x plus 241 and then 4x equals 241. And that it is. As long your pokes are critting do 60 damage, WS will do the same damage that the poke shell combo as long you skip the full reload after it and keep attacking. And that is dumb easy to get even in the worst hit zones of the game. But this also means that you should be doing charged shells at that poke damage because charged shelling becomes optimal at 69 nice damage. The idea is to wait to full reload after a hop with the clip empty so is not that inefficient. But what about if we include the full reload in the equation? In this case, the formula changes to 504 plus x8 versus 894 plus x6. By using the same simplifications we get 195 equals x. 
This means in this case, you are slightly behind the poke shell combo on every occasion because 195 poke damage is something you are not going to see. At by example 120 poke damage means, each WS plus full reload falls 75 points, this is not much and there are 3 extra factors to consider I have been glossing over. If you build for WS, you don't need weakness exploit, critical eye or critical boost 3. This means you put in instead attack boost, peak performance and offensive guard for harder hitting WS. Equally, sharpness used with WS is minimal, 6 pokes and 6 shells spend 18 points of sharpness. WS consumes 4 for the 2 shells and then 3 points for WS. And damage is not diminished by low sharpness. This means no need of razor sharp charm or protective polish plus at all. More room for damage uptime skills. You are not forced to fully reload, delaying it to a good moment greatly boosts your damage. This is the reason why I combo WS with charged shells as a side attack that I use to create openings or for when I have not WS ready. On PC there is an extra tick of damage. The advantages of pokes is that they benefit more from status and elemental damage but until we get good elemental weapons, on raw, WS is better. And also there is that thing of being able to evade out of attacks without a lengthy recovery like WS. My personal recommendation is to build for either charged shells plus WS or poke shell plus WS. As demonstrated here, WS will always do more damage than poke shelling when ready. Charged shells have more synergy because no need to use sharpness mitigation or critical skills opening up a lot of room for suppletory skills and doesn't compete with WS on good hit zones. Using charged shells plus WS plus poke shell also works and is quite fun but is a more advanced way to play since you must be always judging if you should be using one combo or another on the fly, I'm a man of simple things. And I think I have covered too much wide land worm stake laterally. The next video will be about the mystery tick and I'm done with it and can finally turn my head into normal.